be processing. Because if it did, the more phone calls that were happening on the network, the more bogged down the call manager would get. And also, imagine if you've got 100 phone calls active on your network, and all of a sudden the call manager dies. It freezes. Well, you just lost 100 phone calls. But thankfully, the, the call manager can die during communication, and all the phones will talk as if nothing happened. If you have your network configured correctly because RTP is just going between the end devices. Other things the call manager does. Phone feature administration, adding features to your phone. Directory services. You in the IP telephony world can create user accounts for people to where they can log into web pages and manage their own phones pretty powerful. They can forward their phone from a web page. They can add services to their phone from a web page. They can redirect calls on their phone from a web page. I guess that would be the same as forwarding, right? But they can, I mean, there's many things. They can create phone books uh, through the web page. There's a lot you can do by just creating and managing user accounts or directory services. The call manager handles that. Finally, the call manager acts as your link to external applications. If this has some other server like the call center server or uh, a, a voicemail server out there, the call manager is your bridge to those. Now let's talk about the call manager version madness. It's not only gone through many different name changes, it's gone through many different versions. As I mentioned, the original version of call manager that was released was call manager 2.4. Now that was running on a Windows NT server operating system. Now, a lot of people when they were using that were just thinking, oh, how can you do this? How can you run on a Microsoft operating system? Microsoft is unstable, unreliable, you know, and all the criticism came about. So it was a, a surprise when, Call Ma when Cisco came out with Call Manager 3.x versions that Cisco stayed with the Microsoft operating system. They went with Windows 2000 server. And oh, you know, every I think that was the number one complaint. I can't believe they went with Windows server as the operating system. Let me first off address those concerns because it is it is a concern. I when I hear, "Oh, it runs on a Microsoft Windows foundation," you know, <clears throat> immediately I, I just go, "Oh, okay, that's that's scary to me." But thankfully, the Windows server foundation that it runs on is just a host operating system, meaning it's a stripped down, cored down version of Windows Server that is just there to run essentially the web server that Call Manager is running on and, and a lot of the integration into the network. Cisco didn't want to have to create an operating system. They just said, well, you know, Windows Server is, is stable. Let's use that and put our Call Manager application on top of it. The problem came in when people started toying with the Windows Foundation underneath. There's a lot of people, including myself, you know, you, you see a Windows server and you're like, ah, there's something I need to do with, with Call Manager, and it's an Excel format. So you install, I, I admit it, I've done this, you install Microsoft Office on your Call Manager system. Will it work? Yeah. Yeah, Office will run on a call manager. But if you think about it, it'd be like, if you're thinking in a PBX mindset, it'd be like plugging in some kind of card into the PBX that gives you a monitor, and you're like, oh, let's just, let's play Quake on a, you know, a video game, Quake, on my PBX system. People would look at you and going, what, what are you thinking? That's not, that's not what a PBX is designed to do. And in the same sense, when you, when you think about call manager, you need to think about it like it's not designed to run office can it do it yeah but if you do it the more that you add to it the more unstable it becomes so Cisco has worked very hard to get that message out and it's still very very poorly received so they now have multiple uh, trains of call manager that are running the 3.x versions are still around. As a matter of fact, if you go to uh, the Cisco website, I'll pull that up right here. Just go to their Cisco Call Manager page, and you see the versions and options. Call Manager 3.3 is still out there; still runs, you know, Windows 2000 server. 4.0 is out there. 5.0 is out there, and now 6.0 is out there. All simultaneous trains that. You they are still, well, except for, I'll say, except for 3.3. It's still supported, but they're not selling new versions of it. Um, but, you know, the 4.0, 5.0, 6.0 series, they're still creating new releases for that you can purchase and uh, upgrade to and things like that. 4.x is the Windows train. It is currently the most popular. Uh, as of right now, as I speak, and as I speak, new things are being released, so uh, this could change. But in 4.x, there are three major versions. 4.1. 4.2 and 
Now, in 4.1 to 4.2, there were some major feature additions, some major upgrades to the system. And in 4.2 to 4.3, they actually upgraded the whole operating system, meaning these two still ran off of the Win 2000 uh, foundation. 4.3 was the first one to go to Windows 2003 server foundation. Now, again, when you think about this, don't think about it as Windows. When we talk about the installation of Call Manager in the next video, uh, you're going to see that it's, you don't install Windows. It's all image-based. You pop in a CD, it images uh, Windows 2003 or Windows 2000 and the Call Manager all in one thing. You, you, don't, you don't actually configure Windows. And you need to think about it like an appliance. If you buy an appliance from somewhere, somewhere like a firewall appliance or uh, a, a software caching appliance for your web browsers, uh, it, you don't play with the operating system. It's not there. And in the same sense, the Windows operating system, it, it's just not meant to be played with. There are some tools you can use from it, but you, other, other than that, it's meant to be obscure. Finally, in the 5.x and 6.x versions of Call Manager, Cisco did move to an appliance model. Meaning, it is based off of Red Hat Linux. That is the foundation operating system, but the Linux operating system is completely inaccessible. Meaning, you're not going to be getting in there and, and you know using Pico and Pine text editors, you know, and, and playing with Linux. It's it's meant to be inaccessible because Cisco got so much heat for the Windows release, and people were thinking, oh, it's Windows, you can play with Windows and all that. They said we're taking it away. We're removing the ability to play with the operating system. And when they do that, yes, it's a, a safer, meaning a more stable device, because you can't goof up the operating system underneath. It's kind of in a locked, don't change me sort of mode. But you as an administrator lose some functionality in that uh, the, the operating system underneath could have some good monitoring functions, could set, have some good troubleshooting tools, but you can't get to it. Now, with that being said, I will tell you the writing is on the wall, meaning the 4.x version is currently the most popular and in my opinion will stay the most popular for probably two, maybe three more years because it's very stable at this point. It's tested, tried, and true. People love it and, well, <laughs> people are using it and those who are using it love it. Um, and it's familiar. People are used to using it. 5.x and 6.x are the newer ones. 5.x is designed for large business. It's the direct replacement for Call Manager 4.x, but in an appliance model. Um, and the, the, the trouble with 5.x, and I don't want to say trouble because it's, it's still a good version, it's just brand new. Meaning, 